Mikhail Saakashvili was a celebrated friend of the West. Now he's serving a six-year jail sentence. Georgia's government has published several videos of the former president, violating his right to privacy, all for the court of public opinion on whether Misha, as he's known to the nation, is seriously ill or faking it. Last week, a frail Saakashvili spoke to a judge from a secure medical clinic, looking older than his 55 years, requesting treatment abroad. U.S. toxicologists have testified that Saakashvili has progressive dementia caused by heavy metal poisoning while in prison. The government has alleged that he has been self-harming, refusing food, and that it's all a simulation. <laughs> On Monday, the judge ruled against his release. Saakashvili had been working for the Ukrainian government before making a surprise return to Georgia in 2021. He'd been convicted in absentia for abuses of power in office and was swiftly arrested. President Zelensky wants to know whose side the Georgian government is on. You know that they poisoned him and they're slowly killing Saakashvili. This is how Georgia's ex-president looks now. And therefore, I have a question to the Georgian leadership. Who do you support today? Are you neutral or for Russia? Zelensky's allegations are serious. But the Georgian government says they are groundless. When someone accuses the state of torture without any basis, whoever it is, whoever the president of the country is, they should bring at least one evidence of torture, and then we can discuss such a statement. Mikhail Saakashvili's supporters believe he's a victim of the Kremlin. Mikhail Saakashvili was one of the most active fighters against Putin's regime. Putin is the guy who threatened him several times in the past in the history, so there's no surprise that he might try to poison him, like it's doing in Nav with Navalny. This was the man Vladimir Putin threatened to hang by his private parts. The man who convinced the West that he was their partner in Russia's backyard. Georgia is today both sovereign and free and a beacon of liberty for this region and the world. Saakashvili pushed for Georgia's NATO membership. Instead, what he got was a Russian invasion. Georgia is in full regime of self-defense against unfounded and totally legitimate aggression from the Russian Federation. Today, 20% of Georgia's territory remains under Russian occupation. The Moscow model is not terribly complex. Uh, they would like their former Soviet neighbors to be dependent, to be divided. Daniel Kunin was Mikhail Saakashvili's former advisor. Misha is in many ways a, a very powerful symbol um, for any country in the former Soviet space that dares to transform itself, that dares to have a different way of governing itself from that uh, which uh, Moscow would like to impose. Saakashvili remade Georgia. He eliminated petty corruption, built glass police stations to symbolize transparency, turning a failing ex-Soviet state into a free market economy. But a big part of Georgian society still holds a grudge against him for turning authoritarian. Definitely he was not an uh, angel. We had serious problems uh, related to the human rights uh, um, and the actions of the uh, law enforcement agencies. At the same time, of course, we acknowledge his achievements um, in um, anti-corruption reforms uh, and in building of our country. The West is closely watching what Georgia does next. Brussels has yet to approve Georgia's request for EU candidate status.
Keep in mind not only political points you can gain by keeping him in prison, but also the points you are losing, because we have to have a debate today about a political prisoner instead of, for instance, the candidate status. Mikhail Saakashvili did have a mixed record in office, but he brought this country closer to the West, away from its Soviet past, away from Russia's sphere of influence. It's been 10 years since he left office, and now there are signs that Georgia is heading back in the opposite direction. Politically, this country hasn't been at peace with itself for years. In June 2019, crowds battled with security forces outside parliament, where earlier a Russian MP had been given the speaker's chair. Russia promptly cancelled flights between the two countries. The opposition believes that the government is pro-Russian, informally controlled by a billionaire who made his fortune in Moscow. Bidzina Ivanishvili founded the governing Georgian Dream Party and defeated Saakashvili at the polls in 2012. Officially, he quit politics, but the current prime minister is his former secretary. Look at the actions of the Georgian government, not the statement, but the actions uh, of the Georgian government. We will see that they are not supporting Ukraine. They don't try to distance themselves from Russia. And apparently they try to brainwash the Georgians to, for them to believe that the West is not our friend. We asked the Georgian government to comment for this film. No one was available to talk. Saakashvili's imprisonment has agitated an already polarized nation. Should Saakashvili perish this way in prison, I think that it's, it goes without saying that it will create a tremendous rift in Georgian society. I can't understand why that would benefit anyone in Georgia today. It's very clear that that kind of outcome would benefit people in Moscow. I think that's, that's, that's crystal clear. His supporters have pledged to continue to campaign for his release. What happens next to Misha could well decide Georgia's future.